I'm going to switch it up today and take you on my journey from start to finish on how I begin editing video. There are a million ways that you could begin editing. Narr I've narrowed it down and I've found a process that works for me. So if you see this and you think, man, there's more, probably a more effective way to do it, then by all means you should do that, that thing or that way. But this is something that's tried and true for me and it, and it works and it's seamless. And so what I'm, I'm suggesting is a way to accomplish editing the video that you have. So without further ado, let's get after it. So the video that I'm editing and that you see on the screen is of a short film that I'm working on called The Center of the Universe. Now I, I filmed this back when I lived in Wisconsin and it was years ago. It was, and this film was years in the making. So essentially it's about a surfer who loves to lake surf in Lake Michigan and has a wicked long beard, was from Chicago, moved to Wisconsin, and just because he loves surfing so much in the Midwest. Now, Sheboygan, Wisconsin is a very special place because, believe it or not, you can actually surf in Lake Michigan, and it's, it's incredible. And so for the aid role of this project, was the interview that I had with Tommy. Now Tommy is uh, my good friend and we spent years making this film and documenting and just getting as much coverage as possible. And so I sat down with him in his basement and I just asked him questions and I asked him about surfing here, what the vibe is like, you know, what is the energy, why did you come here, why did you move from Chicago, the, you know, the busy city life in Illinois to a very quiet town in Wisconsin. Why did you do that? And so the story begins to unfold. So you're going to see that my images and my footage are categorized in folders. And so it's just an easy way to uh, keep myself organized and keep myself straight when I begin editing and getting knee deep into this project. Before I get into anything else, I will download some tracks so I can get a feel of what the, the vibe is going to be like, so I can get a feel of how the edits are going to to take place, you know, the pacing of the film. It's so hard to edit without music because music drives so much of the film. take away something and and it could be an experience or, a, or or something I saw or something that was you know something that was going through my head earlier that I could solve you know uh, solve some problems or solve some decisions or whatever it is and really that's music for anything that you do but specifically with short films like you need music that helps push and propel that story forward and so uh, just as a as a side note i i have a subscription to audio.com i love it and and i got it at the time when they were first starting so you could just do you could just buy it once for a lifetime and you had access to all their tracks and you know it works great because when i made this film originally i used music bed and i had to pay like 200 dollars a song now I, you know, I pay two hundred dollars for a subscription, and I can have access to the library, which is, you know, I love that because I'll typically download like five or six songs just to have in the folders, and that way I can just drag and drop and say, okay, you know, I like this or I don't like that, and just to kind of get a feel of, of what this is going to look like. So I organize the A roll, and then you know I find the the music, and so. The thing that's the most time consuming behind all of this is definitely the A-roll because you have to, you know, I sh it's probably an hour long interview and I'm going through and, and I'm just scrubbing through and finding the, like, the best sound pieces and then taking them and dragging them onto the timeline so I can begin to build the narrative. Now, once I have the A-roll all laid out, then and only then do I get into the B-roll, the fun stuff, the, the beautiful footage, the, the, the cool shots that help tell the story. And the reason I do that is because unless you know what the story is, it's really hard to pick, 
certain b-roll. Now there are films where you just have b-roll and it's just beauty shots and you just tell a narrative without any sort of voice and that's totally fine. But you know in this instance and in my situation I have a story, I have a character and he is, you know, he confronts a problem and he needed something which the center of the universe provided and as the story progresses you begin to learn more about why surfing in Lake Michigan is so meaningful to him. But if I didn't know what that story was it'd be really hard for me to add b-roll to that so does that make sense? You need to have like the b-roll should complement what your a-roll says or what your a-roll is doing and that's kind of the hard part is because you'll find that Sometimes you have like the most glamorous, the most beautiful shot, but if it doesn't complement or add to the A-roll, then you shouldn't put it in. And that's that's really hard because we're so married to our, our work. You have to look at it objectively and say, you know, take away your personal, your preferences, your pride, and just find something that complements the A-roll the best. Now it's a lot to take in, but that's how I approach editing my stories. You know, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And you know, like anything, it's, it's like a muscle. You know, the more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. Until next time, Roger out.